These ruins in Lebanon remind us that many empires have tried to conquer and control the lands that lie between Europe, Asia, and Africa. In the last three years, the United States has focused on this region with new intensity, announcing new policies and initiatives, and launching new wars. The city of Baalbek in Lebanon may seem like it's on the sidelines of United States foreign policy. After long years of civil war, Lebanon is mostly at peace and enjoying a return of tourism, trade, and prosperity. But in Baalbek, the United States may find its war on terror and its new Democracy in the Middle East initiative can't always be reconciled, at least not without some pragmatic adaptation. These men were elected to run Baalbek earlier this year on a slate of candidates backed by Hezbollah, the party of God. Hezbollah, still considered a terrorist organization by the United States, was once the most disciplined and effective opponent of the Israeli occupation of Lebanon. It now controls 12 seats in the Lebanese parliament, though electoral success hasn't effaced memories of its past. In 1983, Hezbollah attacked the American embassy and marine barracks in Beirut, killing over 300 people. Today, they're discussing how best to move the local vegetable vendors out of this place, the town's central square. They're on a campaign to make the city more livable and more comfortable for tourists. At the national level, Lebanese politics are frozen in sectarian opposition and riven with corruption. Drive south from the fashionable center of Beirut to the Hezbollah-dominated southern suburbs, and you find Gobieri. In suburbs like this, and towns such as Baalbek, Hezbollah has a reputation for honesty and effectiveness. Mohamed Saeed al Kanza is the mayor of Gobieri, a Hezbollah party member, an advocate of democracy, and an enemy of Israel. In his office, he's careful to display the standard Lebanese national icons, the flag, a picture of the president. Inside this newly rehabbed municipal building, you won't know this town is run by Hezbollah, unless you listen carefully to the mayor's rhetoric. <laughs> Of course, in the 80s, the priority was to people were defending their, their very existence, <clears throat> and Israel was present in this area. But after the withdrawal uh, of 2000, there was more room to concentrate on development and civil affairs, which is a, a human type of jihad. Outside the office, however, it's clear that Hezbollah, the political party, helps maintain its popularity through constant reference to its past. These young men, who died during the Israeli occupation, are known locally as martyrs. Although displays like these create the impression that the southern suburbs are a fundamentalist haven, like Iran, the reality in the street is more diverse. And there's a scrupulous care in the display of martyr pictures, never inside the public offices of town government, but prominently and in places of honor in the public spaces of Gobieri and Baalbek. This is going to be the resistance uh, square, this roundabout here. Richard Armitage, the U.S. Deputy Secretary of State, has called Hezbollah the A-Team of Terror, and that remains the official U.S. viewpoint. But terror seems very far away as Mayor Alcanza shows us new parks and schools and other projects in Gobieri. School. And we're still getting this ready. And in a few days we'll have the opening. Although it has committed terrorist acts in the past, most of its violence was directed against Israel, which is regarded as a patriotic duty in a country that lost 20,000 citizens during the Israeli invasion. There's five floors here and three below ground, a playground here. And even secular Lebanese, who have the most to lose if Hezbollah gains more power within Lebanon, agree that the party has changed. This is the new government hospital, the biggest hospital in Lebanon. In the United States, there's an old saying that all politics is local. It's true here, too. People can now point to proof of Hezbollah's effectiveness, schools, parks, water treatment projects. When the mayor of Baalbek opens the door to his office, there's a flood of people who come asking for help, money for the poor, assistance for schools. This woman, the author of a book of short stories that examined controversial social issues, ran into debt self-publishing her book. She needed money to cover her costs, and she got it, even though the Hezbollah-backed city council would hardly approve of some things she's written. 
The United States keeps Hezbollah on its list of terrorist groups. Perhaps, as many critics argue, the group hasn't really changed. And places like Baalbek are just Potemkin villages. But the challenge of promoting democracy in the Middle East is ultimately one of flexibility and realistic expectations. Just as the Afghans embraced democratic processes and remade them, Hezbollah's embrace of democracy may have refashioned the party entirely, and it, in turn, may help rejuvenate Lebanese politics at the national level by making it more accountable and competitive. The challenge to the United States is to avoid being trapped in ideas and understandings that may be superseded over time. <laughs>